Hello and welcome to the Longevity Learning Lab. Today we're going to take a look at marking lines on metal and some of the tools that are common that we use to make these lines. So one is a ballpoint pen which isn't our best choice. Another one might be the use of a pencil and a pencil works pretty good. Another one is the black sharpie marker but it doesn't make lines that are very thin and its cousin the silver sharpie marker which also has the same issues. If we want a real sharp and precise line maybe the carbide tip scribe is a way to go. If we're going to do some flame cutting or involve some heat maybe soapstone's the way to go. If we've got other marks to make we can make them using the yellow paint stick or finally we can make permanent marks using a center punch. Okay so now we're going to use the combination square on the edge of the plate to mark a few lines. The first one we mark is with the ballpoint pen. Uh, that makes a marginal uh, line there, but not real great. Uh, it can be wiped off readily easily. Uh, but the pencil, uh, the pencil is another method that we can use. Uh, it actually makes a pretty good line on the area there where it's been sanded off. It doesn't quite, uh, you can't see it very well the way the reflection is with the light and the camera. Uh, here's the black sharpie marker. So the black sharpie marker works good as far as contrast, uh, but the line's not very thin. Uh, and if we we're trying to lay out some stuff real accurately, that can be an issue. Uh, sharpie Parker, the silver one, uh, very visible with a contrasting type of ink, but still has the same problems as the black one as with regards to the fineness of the line. We can sharpen up a piece of soapstone and put a nice white line on there that will stay there when the metal gets hot. So if we're going to do any welding or flame cutting along there, we can still see that line afterwards. Uh, we can see the nice fine line that the carbide scribe left. Uh, and then we can see the yellow line left by the paint stick. So paint stick is not really meant or intended to, to do layout lines and things like that. I think it's better served. Uh, mark and part numbers and piece numbers on the plate. And then finally here we are using the center punch back on that pencil mark to permanently mark that so that we don't lose it. Now we're going to take a peek at marking some lines on a silvery piece of metal or a piece of aluminum here. Uh, so first thing we use is the ballpoint pen and that works okay. Uh, next one, the pencil works pretty good on the silver material. Uh, the next item up is going to be that uh, black sharpie marker, okay, and that works real well on the aluminum, but once again, still not a real fine line, so it doesn't make the best layout tool, uh, but does work okay. That silver contrasting ink that looked great on that hot rolled plate before uh, doesn't do much for me over here on the aluminum, kind of tough to see. Next one, we're going to use that carbide scribe. Whoops, the square slipped on me there. So uh, hold on, let's uh, let's take another crack at that. So there we go, the carbide scribe works real well. Uh, permanently marked there, uh, but sometimes that mark isn't acceptable on the surface of it. Uh, soapstone works okay for making a contrasting line on that silver material there. So on uh, that aluminum works just well. Here's another issue with the paint stick is, is that it's got a lot of liquid on there and it can bleed out underneath the uh, ruler so you see how that works. So once again the yellow marker is better served for marking parts, uh, part numbers and piece numbers on uh, components rather than actually layout lines. And then the last section there is a black area uh, where I've put some of the dicum or the what we sometimes refer to as bluing. Uh, but I put that on there to allow us to see how the scribe works on that contrasting background of that black material that's been placed on there. So it comes in different colors, black and red and blue, uh, whatever color you'd like. Then the last thing we're going to do here is, is we're going to get that center punch again. We're going to come back uh, and pick one of our lines, and we're going to permanently mark two prick marks on there, or sometimes people like to call them witness marks. Uh, and locate there on the plate there so it's permanently marked or permanently affixed. Okay, now we're going to take a look at how to lay out the center mark for a hole or some other feature that we have to do. Uh, so there I put a little V mark in 10 inches. Uh, and so we're going to come in with the combination square. 
uh, and draw a line uh, right on the top of that V mark there. Uh, and then I'm going to show you one of two ways here. Uh, this is the less accurate method uh, to come back in with our tape measure, try to lay that down there again, and then once again mark that very closely, that little V mark there. So the issue with this is, is I could be off a little bit uh, both in that first mark and that second mark uh, and may not accurately uh, depict where that hole or where that center punch mark is supposed to be. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab the center punch. Uh, we're going to come back, we're going to put the prick mark right at the crosshairs there, uh, and then we'll be able to come back, and sometimes people like to come back with a soapstone and mark it like that, with a circle, so somebody coming later can find it. Or the other beauty of using the center punch is, is even if the soapstone lines get wiped away, we'll still be able to find that little punch mark if we look in the right location. So now we're going to make that same 2 inch mark and that 10 inch mark again. So I've come in once again, use the tape measure, uh, put the combination square on there to get the line accurately marked right along the edge there. So I'm going to use a soapstone, get a nice fine line, and I used the edge of the grinding wheel to sharpen that soapstone so that we can get a nice fine line like that. Now I adjusted the combination square to 2 inches and now I'm going to hold that soapstone on the edge of it, slide the combination square along the edge of the plate, and then we're going to come back once again with the center punch, put a little prick mark right there at the crosshairs, and then once again it's been permanently located there, and it doesn't matter. I can even come back and do even some light grinding or sanding on that surface and still find that center punch mark. Now the last thing we're going to do here is, is we're going to make a layout so if we had to dog ear or put a two inch chamfer on the edge of this plate here, uh, we can do that. So I put a mark at two inches in each direction very accurately with the combination square. Then using the 45 degree guide or edge of that combination head on that combo square. Okay, there we go. There's the line. And then the last item before I flame cut it or plasma cut it, I'm going to come back and I'm going to put some center punch marks along that line there so that even if that soapstone gets wiped off later on, I've permanently captured the layout line that I made there uh, and I won't have any issues seeing it when I come back uh, either with my welding hood, if I am plasma cutting, or if I've got my goggles with a number 5 lens in it, if I'm going to do uh, oxy fuel or flame cutting. And so putting that punch marks along there makes it real easy. All I have to do is come along and follow the dots there with my torch or my plasma cutter, and I'm ready to go. So thanks again for spending some time today. Hope you got something out of it, and we hope to see you again real soon. Thanks a lot.